Let's check out this nice problem I found in the 1997 issue of the Mathematical Gazette. So what we'd like to do is consider a certain maybe nice cubic curve. So we'll say that it's y equals x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. And I mean nice in two different ways. So a, b, and c are rational. And then this curve also has two horizontal tangent lines, and I should say maybe two distinct horizontal tangent lines. And then our goal is to show that the area bound by the curve and the tangents is rational. Now I'd like to point out that we could make this look even a little bit nicer by making the coefficients here a, b, c, and d, and saying that those coefficients have to be integers. But that being said, in the end, we wouldn't really gain anything by that because the first step that we would do is to rescale the polynomial to get a leading coefficient of 1 here just for simplicity. Okay, so I've got my picture over here. So this is a mock-up of a cubic polynomial or the graph of a cubic polynomial that has two horizontal tangent lines. So I've put those at this point t1 and t2. And I'd like to observe that if we can show that the area of one of these is rational, then extremely similar methods will show that the area of the other one is rational as well. So we'll in fact only focus on the area of this magenta piece right here. And then probably a nice little thing for you guys to check out is that you can use these same methods for the area of the blue piece. Okay, so now let's dig into what it means for these to have two horizontal tangents. Well, that means that if we take the derivative and set it equal to zero, we get two real solutions. So let's observe that the derivative here is 3x squared plus 2 times a times x plus b. And so, like I said, we need to set this equal to zero, and we know this has two real solutions. And I really mean two unequal real solutions. But then by the Pythagorean theorem, we know what those solutions are. So here we have x equals, so it's going to be minus 2 times a plus minus the square root of well, that's going to be something like 4a squared and then minus 12 times b all over 6. Oh, but we can simplify that a little bit by factoring a square root of 4. In other words, a 2 out of that square root and then canceling the denominator down a little bit. So that's going to give us uh, minus a plus minus, now we'll have the square root of a squared minus 3b over 3. So those are indeed the places where our two horizontal roots live, or horizontal tangent lines live. So let's put that as a note right here. So in fact, we know that t1 is equal to, well, I'm going to maybe take a third out front, and then we have a minus a minus the square root of a squared minus 3b. And then t2 will be its companion. So I'll again bring a third out front. <coughs> and then we have minus a plus the square root of a squared minus 3b. And I know they're in that order just by the fact that I have put t1 to the left or smaller than t2. Another thing is that we know that a squared minus 3b is strictly bigger than 0 because that's the condition that would give us two real roots to this derivative. In other words, to have two distinct horizontal tangent lines. Okay, so now what we're going to do is do a shift on our original graph. And in fact, the shift that we'll do will take this point right here, our maybe leftmost horizontal tangent, in other words, the local maximum, and we're going to shift it down here to the origin. 
So we'll redraw this picture so we have a feel for what it looks like, but let's maybe set up the new maybe functions for this. Okay, so if we define y to be our original polynomial, so we've got x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c, then what we wanna do is set g of x equal to f of x plus t1 minus f of t1. Now let's observe if we plug x equals zero into this, we most definitely get zero because we have f of t1 minus f of t1. Okay, so now let's maybe get a sh our shifted graph up on the board and then we'll do the next couple of steps. Okay, so here's where we are. We have our original graph and we have our shifted graph just to shade what we're looking for at this point, we're looking for this bit right here because that's exactly this magenta region under the shifting that we set up on the last board. And then, well, let's recall we used f of x to be our original polynomial and then g of x was that new one. And then we were able to find these expressions for t1 as well as t2. Okay. So next up, what I'd like to do is give a name for this maybe second horizontal tangent line in g of x. So let's bring that up here and let's say that occurs at the point alpha. So in other words, g of x has a horizontal tangent line at, well, x equals zero and another one at x equals alpha. But that tells us exactly how g of x factors or g prime of x factors. g prime of x will be a constant times x times x minus alpha. And that constant has to be three, just given the fact that if we were to multiply g of x out, we would get a leading coefficient of one in front of the x cubed. Okay, so this x represents the horizontal tangent line at the origin, this x minus alpha represents that horizontal tangent line at x equals alpha, like we've written over there. Okay, but now we can reverse engineer this to a nice equation for g of x simply by taking the antiderivative. So that's gonna give us, let's see, x cubed, and then we're gonna have minus three halves times alpha times x squared. Observe that we don't get any constant term because we know this function g goes to the origin because of our setup that we've already done here. Okay, and then next up, we can also figure out alpha because observe that alpha is simply the shifting of T1 under, well, the shift that we did. So in other words, alpha must be equal to T2 minus T1. Again, because it's T2 that's been shifted the same way that we shifted f of x into g of x. So let's see, we know t1 and t2 from this up here. So we can easily calculate that. Notice that the a terms cancel and we're left with the square root terms. In this case, we get 2 thirds times the square root of a squared minus 3 times b. Okay, so that's alpha. And now we'll, we can go ahead and start to set up um, an integral for the area of our region. So let's see, this is gonna be the integral from zero up to something. We'll talk about what that something is of our function g of x, which is x cubed minus three halves alpha times x squared dx. So it's zero, kind of obviously, because we start at the origin. And then the upper bound, well, it's gonna be whatever this intersection point right here is. But let's notice that that is the root of g of x that's not equal to zero. So in other words, if we solve the equation g of x equals zero, notice that that pretty quickly turns into x squared times the quantity x minus three halves alpha equals zero, which means our other root of g of x is simply three halves times alpha, meaning that this point right here is, well, three halves times alpha, 
meaning that that is exactly our upper bound of integration. So three halves times alpha. Okay, so now we can take the antiderivative and then we'll plug in this three halves times alpha. So let's see, that's going to give us x to the fourth over four, and then it's going to be minus alpha over two times x cubed. And then, like I said, we evaluate that from zero up to three halves alpha. Okay, cool. So now let's observe that that's going to end up giving us 81 alpha to the fourth over, well, let's see, we've got two to the fourth, which, which is 16 times this four down here, which is 64. And then from that, we need to subtract. Well, we're going to have a 27, that's three cubed over, well, it's going to end up being a 16. So 27 alpha to the fourth again over 16, an alpha cubed from the X cubed and another alpha from this alpha out front. But now let's notice that that area is going to be negative. Oh, but that makes sense because this is a region below the x-axis. So since it's below the x-axis, we might as well just take the absolute value here and that's going to give us the intended area. But now if we put that together and do a little bit of calculation using the fact that if we take alpha to the fourth power, well, we're going to get something which is easily calculable by this quantity right here. We'll see that our final area is alpha squared, or sorry, a squared minus 3b all squared over 12, which is clearly a combination, a nice combination of rational numbers making it rational. And that's a good